Prior to the Taylor Grazing Act, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there was some talk about the, you know, the federal lands out here and that they were arid and the federal government, I guess at one point Utah supposedly was offered them and they didn't want to take them? Uh, there was a uh, public land commission uh, under uh, the, during the administration of President Herbert Hoover who uh, came up with uh, proposals to uh, in fact return uh, federal lands in the western states uh, to um, uh, the states, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, the states indicated that they uh, were not interested in them. That was driven uh, for a number of reasons, uh, probably principally the lands were in very poor condition at that time, hence the Taylor Grazing Act a year later, uh, and also um, the lands really uh, were not uh, all that valuable. And that really goes back to your other uh, question about Missouri and some of the states further east, and the fact that they uh, no longer um, have uh, significant federal lands. Uh, most of those lands actually uh, moved from federal hands into private hands through laws like the Homesteading Acts uh, and uh, similar types of legislation uh, during the middle part of the 19th century. And they moved because uh, the lands had some value. They could be used and developed for agricultural purposes. In 1932, what they were offered was the surface, and only the surface of, of the land, and the federal government would keep all the minerals. And Utah, along with all the other western states, banded together and rejected that false promise and said, no, you got to keep the whole promise, just like you did with all states east of Colorado. And, and that led to the Taylor Grazing Act as a stopgap. And the Taylor Grazing Act, Chad, the first line of the Taylor Grazing Act in 1934 said, this is just to promote the highest use of the public lands pending its final disposal. 